your feet have over 250,000 sweat glands. Sweat is mainly salt and water, but when you mix it with the otherwise harmless bacteria that live on my feet, and the warm, moist socks that they live in, it's a real feast. And what you're smelling is the waste products from the bacteria. <coughs> this is Loughborough University, the place to come to study all things sweaty. We're going to find out why we sweat and find out where we sweat the most. Using some high-tech equipment and this sweat collection vest, we're going to collect Chris's sweat. Now I've got to run on this treadmill in this room, which is kept at 50 degrees Celsius, and I promise you that is really hot. If your bath was this hot, you'd burn yourself. Off you go, then. I'm just jogging, you know, if I was doing this outside, this would be relatively easy. And I've just got these fans in front of me, blowing hot air at me. Running in a room which is 50 degrees is causing Chris's body temperature to rise dramatically. If it rose to the same temperature as the room, he'd definitely be dead. So I need to lose heat, and it's very hard to lose heat when the air around you is hotter than you need to be. And the only way you can do it is by sweating. So hot it hurts! So the reason we sweat is to take the heat energy away from our bodies to allow us to cool down when we get hot. But it doesn't work very well when you put on a bin bag it stops you evaporating the sweat. True, but you can't stop running yet. The sweat Chris is producing is not only full of salt, there are other things lurking in there too. And in fact, sweat is a lot like your pee. It's a lot like urine. So you can think about that next time you're licking it off your upper lip. Gross. I think we've got enough sweat, though. OK, let's uh, stop Chris. This is Professor George Havaneth, an expert in sweat. Well, it's a smelly job, but somebody's got to do it. He's weighing all the pads from Chris's vest and shoes to find out how much sweat he's made and where the most sweat has come from. So he just measured me, and I'm a kilo lighter now than I was at the beginning of my run, and that is that much sweat that I've made, which is quite a lot in half an hour, isn't it? It is a lot, yes. Uh, typically, top athletes would go up to three to four litres. I think you, with just over a litre in four, half an hour, 40 minutes, that's a great performance, I would say. I'm slightly offended, slightly offended. I thought I was a top athlete. <laughs> Dream on, Chris. Anyway, let's find out where you are the sweatiest. If we compare the different values for the pads, mm -hmm. what we see is that you sweat a lot more on, on your back, on your spine, rather than on the front. So, really? OK. And that's typically what we find in general when we measure people. The sweatiest part of your body is your forehead, with almost everybody. Usually about double the amount of the rest of the body. And then the back is the second part. What about my feet? Yeah, surprisingly enough, feet sweat a lot less than we think. Usually, usually we have feet in shoes, mm -hmm. and that, of course, encapsulates the sweat, and that's why we think they're very sweaty. But when we exercise, feet sweat only about a fifth of the rest of your body. So, we now know that Chris's feet are not the sweatiest part of his body, but are they the smelliest? Let's find out. So I've been running in the heat room, I've sweated masses, but which smells worse, the pads from my body or my feet? You've got to find someone willing to have a whiff first, though. No, no thanks. No thanks, you sure? Yeah. Just smell my trainers? <laughs> no? First, sweat from his body. Yeah. What do you think? Not very nice. <laughs> it's, it's not a great smell, to be honest. <laughs> OK, try a trainer. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> oh, grim. <laughs> Anyway, I think we've got a whiffy winner. My feet were by a long way the smelliest, and I don't find that surprising. These are Zahn's trainers. Oh, that's where they went. But it's clear that despite our feet being less sweaty than other parts of our bodies, they are indeed smellier. And that's because they're wrapped up in shoes every day. But without sweat, your body wouldn't be able to regulate its temperature, and you simply wouldn't survive. Ouch. Now we're heading to our lab where we're going to put our bodies to the test to show you how your body works. Ah, that really hurts. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Ow! Did that hurt? Yes, get off. OK, what about this? No, but get off, I don't like it. We all experience pain. You've got over three million pain receptors throughout your body. But some areas like this... Ah! ..have more receptors than other areas, like this. Now, I know I shouldn't be pinching you, Tom, but it was all to explain pain receptors. 
pain receptors are specialized nerve endings. They act as messengers, so when they detect something painful, they tell your brain you're hurt. Pain can be really useful sometimes because it stops you accidentally damaging your body. But why is it we feel pain differently in different situations? Sometimes you can stub your toe and be in terrible agony. Other times you cut yourself really badly playing football and you don't notice till the end of the match. And that's because pain is in your brain. And this means that you can reduce the amount of pain you experience. And we're going to show you how. But before I show you this clever trick, I'm going to inflict a little bit of pain on Zand so that we can see how a person reacts normally. Oh, good. This is a heat stimulation thermode. It's a pain machine. I'm going to put it on the back of Zahn's hand and turn up the temperature until he can't stand it anymore. And I'm going to do the same to him, and we'll see who can take more pain. It's a little bit dramatic, isn't it? This medical device is used by scientists to test people's sensitivity. The end of the rod will get increasingly hot the more I turn this dial up. It won't burn, but let's see how much heat Zahn can take by letting his body send pain signals to his brain just like normal. Are you ready, Zond? Yep. Ah! No, it's not on yet. Put your hand back. Right. So that's the temperature on of the probe. I'm going to start turning it up. Remember, we can only do this because we're doctors. Yeah, it gets warm. Yeah, it's warm now. Let's turn it up a bit more. I, I can definitely feel that there's a hot thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, OK. And a bit more again. Ah, oh, ah, oh. ha, ha. So that, that's really burning now. Yeah, yeah, ow, 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 ow. Ah, yeah, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, okay. that's enough. Zand has managed to stand the pain up to a temperature of 45.2 degrees. It was definitely painful. It wasn't just you kind of wimping out. No, it was painful. It was getting more painful. And there was definitely a moment where it just suddenly was just like, oh, no, 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 I want to take my hand away now. That's too painful. OK, my go now. Now I'm going to try the same thing on Chris. Only I've got a trick up my sleeve. I'm going to distract my brain. And that means I should be able to take more pain than Zand. So let's see how long Chris can last. Chris, this is going to hurt you a lot more than it's going to hurt me. We'll see about that. I'm going to use a different technique, Zan. I'm going to distract myself, and I'm going to really pretend that this doesn't hurt. And I reckon I can take more pain. I'm on a beach. I'm on a really sunny beach. I'm feeling really good. You're not on a beach, Chris. You're in a lab with a red-hot probe sticking into your hand. It's not red-hot. It's barely hot. Is it on? <laughs> How's that beach feeling now? The beach is quite hot now. <laughs> OK, OK, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> so let me tell you how you did. 48.2 degrees. So that beats you by three degrees. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So there's absolutely no way I could have gone another three degrees. Yeah, it really does work. So next time you've got to go to the doctors and have an injection, try it and see how you get on. Yes, it's a clever trick. If you think of something relaxing, you'll find it easier to cope with pain. Don't feel a thing. <laughs> In this glass, it's colder than the freezer in your kitchen. It's actually colder than the North Pole. In fact, it's colder in here than the coldest place on Earth. That's Antarctica. This is called a cryogenic chamber, and I'm about to get inside. That actually sounds like a terrible idea. A cryogenic chamber is a freezing cold room used to treat common health conditions and help top athletes recover from injury, helping to repair their muscles. But today, I'm using it to find out how our bodies react in extreme cold. That room is minus 60 degrees, and the room behind me is minus 135 degrees. That's five times colder than the coldest day ever recorded in the UK. What's it going to feel like? Chilly. <laughs> This is Renate Zajay, and she'll be monitoring me to keep me safe when I'm in the cryogenic chamber. So clearly I'm going to need a very warm coat to go in there. No, just very, very small clothes, not very warm clothes. This is it. This is all I get. This is only that. Perfect. What do I mean perfect? This doesn't look like nearly enough clothes. I might be cold, but at least I'm going to look stylish. Headband, vest, shorts, two pairs of socks, clogs, face mask, gloves. I told you I'd be looking good. 
So I've got James with me filming, but James can't come in with that camera. So I've got a special camera with me, which I can take in there. So I'm not going alone, you're coming with me. Here we go. And it'll be so cold in there that I need the face mask to stop my snot and saliva from freezing. Whoa. Oh. oh, okay. It's very, it is very cold, but it's quite manageable because it's very dry. It's also very, it's, it's almost sort of foggy in here. So the room I'm in at the moment is as cold as the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. But this room is just preparing my body for the next room, which is twice as cold. Minus 135, here I come. Oh. Okay. Um. It's so cold in here that I can only stay in for three minutes, and Renato will be monitoring me the whole time to make sure I'm safe. It's very hard to describe quite how cold this is. The closer I get to the floor, oh, 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 this is now very, very, very cold. It's very hard to think it's so cold, actually. The shock to my body is making it hard to control my breathing. I'm getting goosebumps all over my arm, and you can see every single hair on my arm is standing straight up. And the reason that's happening is that my body is trying to trap a layer of air very close to my skin. And uh, I'm shaking a lot. Shivering like this is my body getting my muscles moving to generate heat and keep me warm. As my hand gets cold, you can see all the blood goes out of my skin. And now my fingertips are going absolutely white. Very, very cold indeed. That's because as my body gets colder, it's making a choice. It's taking the blood away from the parts of my body it can do without, like my fingers and toes, and putting it into the center of my body to keep vital organs like my heart and brain alive. I'm now coming up to almost three minutes. I will be very pleased to come out. Oh. 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 <laughs> That's so much better. This is like walking into an oven. But when you're cold, you get goosebumps. And that's your skin trying to trap a layer of warm air around your body. So what you can see from that is how important your skin is in regulating your body temperature. And when you get extremely cold, your body starts making choices about what it wants to keep going. Very, very, very quickly, my body takes the warm blood from my skin, brings it into the middle of my body to keep my organs warm, my brain going, all of these things. When I come out into the warm, my body immediately releases that blood and you can see it all going to my skin. And there's a very good reason why our bodies react like this in the cold. If my core body temperature, that's the temperature in the middle of my body, had dropped by even four degrees, it could have been fatal. What's so interesting about being in a room that cold is that you can see all the incredible things your body does to keep you at exactly the right temperature. Ouch. Zond, how would you respond if I were to say there's a new case in the emergency department? Well, Chris, I'd stay calm and say that sounds very exciting. Will Zond, there's a new case in the emergency department. That's the most exciting thing I've ever heard! <laughs> Arriving by ambulance to Alderhay Emergency Department is four-year-old Billy. Hi, Billy. So, Billy, tell us what's happened to you. A horse kicked me. A horse kicked you? Wowzers, how did it happen? Billy was walking to the park through a field with his family and dog, Bonnie. He saw some horses and decided to feed them. Hey, Chris, what kind of bread do horses eat? Um, I don't know, Zan. Bread. <laughs> anyway, Bonnie the dog started barking at the horses as Billy walked behind one of them. You should never walk behind a horse, Chris. Oh no, I've got a bad feeling about this. The horse was annoyed by Bonnie and kicked out the <laughs> Billy in his tummy. Ouch! <laughs> Ready to examine Billy is Dr. Bimal Mehta. Try and lift this leg up. Is that okay? Not sore. When he first came in, we wanted to do a full check over of every part of him because he'd been kicked at the top of his tummy. And when we examined him, we could see a small little bruise just at the top of his tummy, which made us worry that maybe there had been some injuries inside. Billy needs to have an ultrasound scan so Dr. Bill can see inside his body. He puts some gel on Billy's abdomen to help make the scan images clearer. Just a little, just a little. <laughs> it's a little bit freezing. <laughs> 
ultrasound looks good, but Dr. Bimal wants to be sure, so he's sending Billy for a more detailed CT scan. What will you be looking for, Doc? The worst case scenario might be Billy has an injury to his liver or his spleen up at the top of the tummy. Wow, a horse kick can do a lot of damage. Billy's heading off for his CT scan. We'll find out if he has any serious internal injuries later on.